Happy morning, everybody. Welcome to our big happy webinar. I'm Rob Booker. It's nice to see you here. Uh, I have a really raspy voice. Apologize in advance for that. Today we're going to look at optimizing the T6 robot, this trend trading robot that we've been working on together in this webinar. I'm really excited about this. This has been something I've been looking forward to all week. I'm going to move over to my charts. Okay, we've been taking a look at uh, the British pound against the New Zealand dollar, British pound, US dollar, been taking a look at a, a variety of different currency pairs. And we've been testing out this trend trade when we get a signal with the RSI 5. So when the RSI 5 shows up and then we get divergence, we decide to take a trend trade. And it's a counter trend trade, but it's really a trend trade because that's an early warning sign that the trend is going to reverse. So the existence of this RSI 5 line right here, coupled with a, a bearish divergence, gives us the indication that it's time to take a trade. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to work every single time. But there are a lot of instances where this works really well. So what we're going to do today is we have some one-minute data loaded up on Wes's MetaTrader. Good morning, Wes. Good morning. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get a date ready for you, Wes. And if we want to switch over to your screen. Yeah. That sounds pretty awesome. We're going to show you all how we optimize or begin the process of optimization of a robot to look at maybe optimal settings and whatnot. Now, this is going to be kind of a, a, an improvised and shortened version of that, but it's still going to work still the same. Okay, we're going to look at the 12th of April at 11 a.m. All right, 12th of April at 11 a.m. And, and we're going to trade sell. three. Yeah, okay. we're going to sell. Now, what we've been doing recently, everyone, is just putting a 200 pip profit target in there and a 100 pip stop loss. What we want to do now is I want to test out some maybe optimal profit target settings. So, Wes, how would you go about the, the task of step-by-step -step optimizing for a profit target? Well, somebody in a previous webinar had mentioned that we should uh, put a check mark in one of these boxes, and we said, "Well, that's for optimization, and we'll cover that later." And today is today is that day. Uh, optimization allows us to uh, test multiple settings on a robot without actually having to go through the process of testing, um, like and changing those settings ourselves. Uh, and the very first thing to do is to put a check mark in the box of all the um, the settings that you want to that you want to play around with. Now you shouldn't you shouldn't put a check mark in all of them. If you put a check mark in all of them, then you're going to be looking at you know very quickly becoming hundreds of thousands of tests running, which MetaTrader can't do. Um, so you want to you want to try and limit the number of settings you play with to just you know two or three or maybe four um, and uh, and not like too many like we wouldn't want to go like one on the start position and then step by one and then stop at five hundred because that makes five hundred rounds of testing and that'll make more sense as we go a little bit further but uh, the starting place is the very first setting. That we want the robot to test. So, if we wanted it to test a 100 pip stop, or sorry, a 100 pip profit first, and then we want to step by 100, and we want to uh, maybe stop at 500, then that means it'll run one test where the cumulative profit in pips is 100. It'll run another test where it's 200 because it's 100 and step by 100. Then it'll run another test where it's 300, another test where it's 400, another test where it's 500, and then it will stop. And then it will spit out a whole bunch of results and tell us which one was uh, the best, I suppose. Now, this is awesome. Thank you. Could we also combine a 
test with the break even. Yes. All right. Let's see. Break even this, at pips. So this will combine and test a combination of using a, a move to break even and a profit target. Um, so let's start at 50 and go up by 50 and stop at, I don't know, 200 or 300, whatever. <laughs> we'll stick with 200 because we've already got, what, like 20 tests running now? Mm -hmm. Maybe more than that. All right, yeah. so while we, um, so let's go ahead and run this test. What happens now is he has to, yep, yeah, you check the optimization box and click start. Yeah. Make sure, uh, and you can't run you can't run this type of test in visual mode either. Just that's one last little thing. <laughs> All right, so this is now running. A bunch of tests. And, oh, it, it's it's done. And it's already done. And it, what it, what it's designed to do is tell us what the most successful combination of settings is. Right. And least successful. Yeah. Um, so the most successful in a profit sense would be one of these four here at the top because it made fourteen thousand five hundred and eighty-eight dollars. And those were all with 400 pip profit targets. Yeah. And then <laughs> the next one would would be a 300 pip profit target. And then after that would be the, you know, just kind of, obviously the trade worked out, you know, and we, we went for a whole lot of profit. Uh, our drawdown, whoop, that's what I wanted to say. Okay. The drawdown was a little high on those, but that also makes sense. Um, yeah, it makes sense that if you're going to go for more profit, you have to withstand a lot more moves against you. Yeah. Now, this is, if you go back to where you set up the, the, the test in the first place, look at the date range, everybody, on the, on the screen in front of, we're only, te we, we really only were testing a trade that happened on the 12th of April. D generally, you, you don't want to optimize for one specific trade. That, that's nonsensical. But that's how you go about optimizing. Now, if you wanted to optimize a robot that was trading over the course of a year, for example, we might switch west to the, I don't know, the Finch with ADX. Do you have one of those in there? Uh, I sure do. Okay. So let's look at the settings here. And first trade lot, second trades, pips to trade two, uh, profit in dollars. So let's do first trade profit. Let's optimize for the profit target on trade one. And let's start at one. And we'll step upwards by 1.1. 1 .1, and we'll only go up to 1.5. Something really simple. Yeah. And then let's optimize the second trade profit target. Start at zero. Step by, I don't know, let's get a little crazy now. Um, Step by 0.5, maybe? And then go all the way up to, what do you think? Five. Five. <laughs> all right. Now, what this is going to do is we're going to back test. We probably have enough data to do this, Wes, if we start even in January, right, to the present? Yes. Yep, we do. So what this will do is it will optimize, and it will find the, the best settings over a whole lot of trades for this system, not just one trade. Now we're going to get a bigger set of data. It'll take a little bit longer to run the test, and we'll get a, a better idea of maybe what settings we might want to use if we ran this live. Yeah, it shouldn't take too much longer, though. I mean, we're still in looking at about seven months of data here. Ulrich asked a good question. He said, shouldn't the break-even be less or equal to the profit target but not greater? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that, true. That just means that the, the break even would have been off on some right. of right. the results, which I thought about that as we we're doing it, but you know, we kind of want Yeah, the, me too. Me too, but know, we wanted to test I mean, essentially it would have been unnecessary in some of the results and that's fine. Yeah. 
We can actually watch the results as they spit out here. And we're back testing the Finch with ADX. A lot of you probably don't know what this is. The Finch with ADX is a robot of ours that trades the short-term charts, and it takes a lot of trades. And this is pretty much a, a, as it exists right now. This is the best version of that that exists anywhere, and it's the most. It it, it does the best job of staying out of extended drawdown of any other robot, and it's inspired by the Finch robot that Wes and I built, plus some customizations that our friend Mike in Spain helped us with when we traveled to Spain and, and did a meeting of all of our robot traders together. This is, I like doing this, this is interesting. Um, we're just using the data that the uh, broker provides in the, in, the, in the download section of MetaTrader. A lot of people say, oh, well, your modeling quality is gonna blow. You know, if you visually go back and, and look at these examples, what you'll find is that, generally speaking, when we do testing that happened over a recent period of time, the data is just fine. And you can spot check it, and it's just fine. When you become obsessed with modeling quality and data, and what, what can happen is you end up making the assumption that you've now got a back test that ought to look exactly like your live testing, and, and that doesn't ever happen anyway. And what you're better with is an approximation and, and, and a best guess. And then you put it on a demo account. And then you go from demo to small a live account. That's a better process. If you obsess about data and downloading the best data from best modeling quality, what happens is your broker's data invariably doesn't even match that either anyway. And so it's not about getting a modeling quality that's 90%. It's about getting some settings that you like and testing them live. Um, and that's what we do. We just kind of run it through the old tester. And, and sometimes, of course, there's just no data. And that then, in that case, you can't do it at all. I love the questions that are coming in. So, so far, um, can we sort it by total number of trades? Sure can. So while it's running, we can sort it by the, the one that took the most number of trades. We can also yeah. sort it by the one that made the most amount of money. I would love to see the one that made the most amount of money. All right. So, huh, one point five and one point five. Very interesting. So we're looking at combinations of profit targets that seemed to make the most amount of money. It's really fascinating to me. Yeah. Oh, we have a winner or close to a so winner. Far, yeah, we're not we're not completely done yet. We're about halfway done. So it has to run every combination of profit target on the first trade that we chose and every combination of every profit target on the second trade. So it's got multiple combinations that it has to run together and that's what just takes time. Yeah. This is why we this is why we've begun the process of experimenting with systems and automated processes that you can just type in the settings you want to test in Excel, Microsoft Excel, and then Microsoft Excel will tell MetaTrader what tests to run, and then you just walk away and it spits out the results. Uh, Alex says, isn't $400 of drawdown for $50 of profit a big risk? Yes. Uh, Alex, remember that we're doing this backtesting for the purpose of showing how to optimize. We're not doing this backtesting to show you how glorious the result is. Can the tests be run offline? Yes, they can. As long as you have data, you'll notice that Wes's uh, MetaTrader is not even connected. Yeah, my, my MetaTrader is not connected to the broker right now at all. So you can run them offline. And we can have a longer conversation when we come back on Monday. Remember, there's no webinar on Fridays. Uh, we can have a longer conversation on Monday about um, what kind of trade-offs we except as far as profit target to risk and risk to reward and drawdown to whatever else. We can have a yeah. longer conversation about that. Once this report is done, can you can you export the optimization report? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we sure can. As soon That's as it gets cool. done. 
it'll be done here in about a minute or so. Sixty-two ninety-two. It looks it's like the uh, yeah, the second trade profit in dollars being higher is you know obviously producing more profit. Very interesting. Uh, can you sort it by drawdown? Sure can. All right, and we want to do lowest drawdown first, if that's okay. Okay. That's a pretty good trade-off. It's not bad. Um, it's got a good profit factor. It's got a high win percentage. Um, a lot of systems that have a high win percentage will have a higher drawdown. Um, in order to hang on to a trade long enough to make money, sometimes you need to let it experience some loss. It's not a, it, sh it should come as no surprise to our friend Joel in Arizona that one of the combination that seems to work really well is a first trade of 1.2 and a second trade that's about four times larger. That seems to be a sweet spot lately. Um, okay, is it all done? Um, yeah, oh, just so three close. tests. Yeah, we're so close. Okay, when this test is complete, friends, what we'll do is export the test and take a look at what it looks like when you export it. And then I'm going to answer some of your questions uh, when pausing the recording. And wrap it up there. Come on, MetaTrader, you got to do it. All right. All done. Okay, uh, so I'm going to right click and then um, actually I'm going to copy all. Okay. And then I'm going to open Excel and paste. And then he pasted the results. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, that should give you some information on how to optimize and what to look at, and then you can just run wild with it. We're going to answer a few questions that came in during the webinar. So I'll stop the recording. If you're watching <coughs> the recording, don't forget, subscribe on YouTube or like the page on Facebook. Thanks so much, everybody. And we'll see you on Monday. Okay, I'm trying to stop the recording, Wes, but it won't stop. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Let me uh, see if I can stop the recording. That is really weird. It is not stopping. Okay, huh. will you download this later and just cut this part off when I say yeah. goodbye? Okay. Yeah. Douglas says, Wes, will you show everybody really quickly where you get the data, how you download it? And you can just show them where it is, but we don't have to download it, actually. Okay. So we go to Tools and then the History Center. <coughs> and then you double-click on the currency pair that you want. And then double-click again on the one minute data and then press download and it'll take a little bit of time depending on the currency pair like the euro dollar will take like 10 or 15 minutes maybe even longer yeah it takes a long time be ready yeah. for that but okay. yeah that's how you download the data Rodrigo the Great asks do you set the trade direction in the common tab no when we're testing the T6 robot, we set it inside the inputs of the robot. You do not need to set it inside the common tab. And you're, uh, when you set the time of day on the T6 robot, the time that you want it to start trading is according to your own MT4 server time. Debbie says, is this T6? No. That was uh, Finch with ADX, different than T6. Uh, Scott says, how do we sign up for the new lifetime introduction webinar later today? Wes, will you send a thing out to everybody for that? Yep. I will send it, send it out this morning. Okay, great. Okay, doke. Uh, Debbie says, where can we find the best time for EAs? I don't really know what the best time for EAs means, um, but one answer to that question is you optimize. You, you optimize it. You find out what time your robot trades better. Um, we've done a lot of experimentation with that in the past, and we'll do more of that in these webinars in the morning as well. Thanks, everyone, for being here, and we'll see you on Monday. Have a great day. Thanks, Wes. Yeah, thank you. Bye for now, everyone.